The tailgating. We are the pregame pageantry. The entrance. And the execution. The Nittany Lions season opener is a win on every level. Penn State climbs over the Mountaineers. Up next, first time visitors from the first state. It's time for Nittany Game Week. No chance. We'd start any other way without a doubt. The best moment of the night. Scrap back in Beaver Stadium for the first time in 12 years. Honorary captain for the Nittany Lions season opener. Beautiful view of the sky behind him as longtime defensive coach and coordinator. Our very own Tom Bradley waves to the sellout crowd in Happy Valley. Welcome to Nittany Game Week. I'm Todd Sadowski with Jay Paterno and the man of the moment. Tom Bradley, tell us a little bit about the big night. It was great. It was so exciting to be back in the stadium again. You realize how you're just, all those years you were part of something that just was so much bigger than yourself. Pretty cool. Absolutely. About time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was surreal. It was really neat to see all the guys come up to you and, and talk to you. And time tailgating, which yeah. you enjoyed. Yeah. Yes, I've never tailgated It before. wasn't just about all that moment. It was about a lot of stuff before that. As I mentioned, perfect weather for tailgating. Crowd of over 110,000 inside with thousands more outside of the stadium. A solid start to the year for the blue and white in our opening drive. Well, guys, I like to compare season openers at home to an opening day type of atmosphere in baseball. The traditions return, the players greeted on the pregame walk, fans thrilled to have the games back. A little extra show coming through the tunnel. But once they're on the field, not spectacular, very solid victory in game one. Yeah, they took care of things they needed to do. West Virginia gave them, you know, 14-7 halftime, put a little doubt in their minds, and they responded very, very well in the second half and took care of business. Pretty good opener? I thought it was a great opener. And one of the things they did, they tackled very well for an opening game. The end result never really felt in doubt, even when it was close early on. That's probably because Penn State is talent rich at just about every position. I just feel like we got talent everywhere around the ball. You know, on both sides, offense, defense, O-line, D-line, wide receivers, corners, like, we got guys everywhere, so as long as we can continue to put things together and do what we got to do, everything going to work out just fine. Now, Wormley and the offensive line paved the way for both Nick Singleton and Katron Allen. Talk about the defense a little bit. You know, West Virginia challenged them, ran the ball pretty effectively, but what did you see as the and game came on? They stepped up and got better as the game went on. They get used to, it takes a while to get used to the speed of the game, really. The first game's always, you're always a little bit worried about the speed factor because it just takes a little bit of time to settle in and get used to it. What we saw was that they were able to move the ball some, but in these critical situations, there you see a tackle right there. They were able to get off the field when they needed to be able to get off the field, Tom, and that's really that's emblematic of a solid defense. That's exactly what they had to do, and they did it. It was no really big play, okay? They kept the big plays in the minimum, and you don't have big, big plays, usually you're going to win the football game. This side of the ball lost some vocal leaders. They have plenty of other guys to fill their shoes. So let's turn our attention now to the new young quarterbacks that lead this offense. Impressive debut as the number one guy for Drew Aller. Jay, what struck me was how effortless those 15 to 20 yard outs are for him and his poise on the field and in the post game press conference. He doesn't seem like he's going to get rattled very easily. No, it doesn't seem like it, but we'll see as we go. There's higher mountains to climb, but I think the thing that we'll talk about a little bit in the, in the scouting report, he moved around, kept his eyes downfield. He's not a runner, but he found places to go with the ball when there was pressure on him. And we'll talk about that as we go. Yeah, they made some big throws, Tom, and, well, and he did some nice things. They say he's not a runner, but he has escape ability. He knows where to go, and he knows where the sticks are. Yeah, he had good feel. Even the first touchdown pass, which will break down, I mean, just kept his eyes downfield, found the one-on-one -on -one matchup, and made it happen. That was a big play in the game. You mentioned one-on-one -on -one matchups. He's one for one when it comes to garnering Big Ten Offensive Player of the Week honors. <laughs> 21 of 29, 325 yards, three TDs, and a lot of praise from his head coach after the performance. I think where he is unusual for a young player with a with a pretty sophisticated playbook I think he knows the stuff cold or knows the stuff pretty darn good where when he gets into problems he knows to go he knows where to go with the ball I don't think it was really any different for me emotionally uh, maybe a little bit more amped up just because of the type of game we were playing in and the atmosphere I knew it was going to be but um, I mean it's a huge shout out to the fans that really showed up and really were loud tonight. 
Now with 31 points already on the board, Coach Franklin gives redshirt freshman Bo Prabula a few minutes of playing time in the end. He needs as much seasoning as he can get. He's only one play away from having to take over the offense. And Jay, of course, the Speaking fastest runner, over, though. The longest <laughs> run of the night. The one explosive run for either team was the squirrel. I mean, look, look at that leaping ability. I mean, it's unbelievable. His form is fantastic. He gets loose into the end zone. Might have been the only thing more popular than Tom on Saturday night. <laughs> He's faster than Tom. <laughs> <laughs> he is quicker. But look, nobody gets loose without some help from the big guys up front on the football field. Let's send it over to Andrew Callista for more on an experienced offensive line and their rapport with a young QB. As the Nittany Lions entered a 2023 campaign, yes, all the hype was on quarterback Drew Aller. Well, my eyes were focused through the fog on the big guys up front, and I am locked in. What did I see against the Mountaineers in week one? Well, in tackle Olu Afashinu and the crew, I saw a group that provided a nice security blanket for their new quarterback in his first start. Look at Olu, doesn't even flinch here when his face mask gets tugged. On the field, those guys look right into Drew's eyes every single play. Did they notice anything different in him before this game? In practice, when, when it's a tough situation, he's doing the same things he's always doing. He's always just calm, collected, and ready to go. So. You know, when I see Drew like that, I know we, we got, we're going to be good. And Aller was good, efficient, and he looked comfortable, even at times with a bad snap here and there, and that is a great start for him. What is even better is the O-line enjoys some love in the student section sign game after this victory over West Virginia. The Brick Wall Gang, I like the nickname, as Olu and center Hunter Norzad posed for a photo. Fans, you may be concerned that the run game didn't have any big gainers. Well, Let's remember Nick Singleton and Katron Allen averaging five yards a pop is not a bad start. Overall, a good opener for the offensive line. Thank you, Andrew. Still to come, our scouting report. The areas our coaches saw positives from the Nittany Lions against WVU and a few concerns to clean up in week number two. You're watching Nittany Game Week. Opening Drive is sponsored by your local Ford store. Visit buyfordnow.com today. Well, welcome back. Everyone involved in this game understands the intention. Give Delaware a chance to experience a big-time college football atmosphere for the Nittany Lions. Everyone on the roster be ready for some valuable playing time if it comes to that. These aren't always the most competitive matchups, guys, but can be of significant value early in a season. Well, Todd, thanks. And really what we're looking at this week is we're going to take a look at some things from last week's game because at the end of the day, you want to have some things to coach on film and you want to be able as a head coach to go in and say, hey, you guys think you're good? Well, let's talk about some things you need to improve on. A lot of positives offensively. Quarterback play, we talked about zero turnovers. Wide receivers made plays. Let's go to some things that would concern you if you were a head coach as you look at the tape. Third downs and red, and red zone was not good enough. Lots of pressure on the QB, which we'll talk about. And tight end, only one catch. Running backs, only two catches in the past game. So those are some things that they'll probably be looking at. So let's talk about a little bit on the defensive side now. Positives, really good on third and fourth downs, Tom. Absolutely. Uh, tough versus the pass. It concerns interior versus the run game. Carter and Robinson, production, got to be more than they got. And defense didn't get any turnovers either, Tom. And that's going to be, you got to get the turnovers. You know that. That's the battle you want to win. Yep. So let's take a look at a little bit of the good news, bad news. As you look at the good news is Alar looks really good moving around, avoiding pressure, getting the ball downfield for some big plays. The bad news, Tom, and we'll look at this, is that he had to move around. Too much pressure, a lot of chances for them to get to him and hit him. But here's the, the big play of the game early in the first drive. They've got max protection here. He, he's got to come off this thing, move, keep his eyes downfield. How important is that, Tom? Well, that makes it tough on the defense, as you know. And the one thing they, that I think that, they, that he was able to do, by doing that, he allowed himself to get that ball downfield here. And, and is great. He, he looked to get tremendous vision to me. And, yeah. on the field. And that's not easy to teach with young kids. No. So let's talk a bit about concern on defense, the interior run game. West Virginia, really veteran offensive line. Penn State's defensive line was highly touted as well, but they were able to get to the next level, get guys moved, pick off blitzes and get it. Well, that's one of the things we talked about in the show. This center is an excellent football player. This is the strength of their offense was the offensive line coming in. 
and you can see right off the bat, there's a little bit of surge there on the right side. They get downfield next level. They're going to have to shore that up a little bit defensively. Now, let's talk about some things Allard did that you may not have noticed. Here's a set where they've got two tight ends balance set, and they're going to cho choice the run to either side. It's all on him to make that choice. Here he makes the right choice. Now, again, no big runs over 14 yards. Singleton's one-on-one -on -one secondary, that's something that in the future he's got to make that guy miss. And, and, and he, I think that's going to happen because I think he's a heck of a football player and he will have his opportunities and he'll make a miss more than they'll get him. So let's talk about the situations on defense. Five-man pressures, fourth and seven here. They were great on fourth downs and third downs. And they take away the easy throw, Tom. There's nowhere to go with the ball here. These guys did a great job locking down the receivers. Another real positive with Penn State offensively, they found a way to get the ball to the wide receivers against the blitz with some different things. Here's a nice easy throw and catch, easy read, and then the receiver makes a great play. Well, that's what you, you said it right there. The whole thing sets up. He sees it. He, he can tell the read. There's no one in center field. He, he knows what he's got right now. It's four across the board. Great presence downfield to get those blocks and get that out there. Let's talk quickly about Delaware. A really good offensive football team. 559 yards last week against Stony Brook. Obviously not Penn State's defense, but they do present the pass and the run. Good running back here in Marcus Yarns, but too many turnovers last week. Exactly. That's the one thing. They cannot have turnovers this week against Penn State, but they've got some skill on this football team. Delaware plays good football, better than a lot of people think. Yeah, if you look at it, they beat Navy last year. Correct. A couple years ago, they went to Pitt and only lost by three. So they, they played some, some FBS teams and, and done really well, and it's a proud program, which we'll talk about in the last segment. Speaking of proud, Always proud to be on this show with you. Oh, that's too much. I'm blushing. <laughs> Thanks, fellas. All right, what an opportunity for Delaware's players to come to Happy Valley. I'm sure they've been looking forward to this road trip for a long time. And for a bunch of the Blue Hens, it's a chance to play in their home state. Here's some video of the team's opening game victory over Stony Brook. That you mentioned they racked up over 500 yards of offense in front of a crowd of just over 11,000 in New York. Going to be a much different environment for the guys in Beaver Stadium. There's a total of 27 players on the Delaware roster from the Keystone State, most notably three of their four captains. Senior defensive lineman Ethan Saunders from Waynesboro, senior offensive lineman Brock Gingrich from Cocalico High School, and senior linebacker Dylan Trainer, who played at LaSalle College High School in Philly. Up next, our impact interview with Big Ten Saturday Night Coordinating Producer Matt Marvin. Why NBC hired two of the best field generals in Penn State history to anchor their coverage. And Indie Game Week returns after this. Impact Interview is sponsored by the Pocono Mountains, where small town charm meets big adventures. Book your trip today by visiting PoconoMountains.com. <laughs> Well, welcome back to Nittany Game Week. It is time for our impact interview, and it is not a stretch to say that our guest has had a profound impact on the way that you view sporting events all across the country. We have got NBC producer Matt Marvin. He's a six-time Sports Emmy winner. Matt joined NBC Sports in 2000 has served as the lead producer of NASCAR on NBC, Notre Dame football on NBC, and the NHL on NBC. Also a veteran of 10 Olympic Games and five Super Bowls. Matt, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate the time. Pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me, guys. NBC has really jumped into this with both feet, and you guys went right at it in Happy Valley. So talk about the resources, not just financially, Matt, but also the amount of people that you bring to a production, because it's essentially an all-day show. Yeah, it's a bit of a traveling circus uh, in, in a way. There's, there's well over 150 people. Uh, as you guys saw, we have both our game production crew, but also the pregame production crew. So between that, there, there, there's well over 150 people on the crew, and, and, and we couldn't have picked a better place to come, right? Like the, the team was so accommodating uh, to set up our set outside, uh, outside of the stadium, then the set on the field for our pregame show, and then how they took care of us up in the booth with Noah Eagle and Todd Blackledge. Um, the resources in terms of, of cameras, that's probably the most cameras that we'll have on a game this season. I mean, there'll be a couple other games that rise to that level. But we wanted to make sure that we really, you know, put our best foot forward in this environment and we're able to capture everything that that stadium offers. And uh, hopefully we did that. You hired two guys that are really represent two of the best on field and off field leaders in Penn State football history and Todd Blackledge and Michael Robinson. Can you talk a little bit about the strengths and professionalism that those two guys bring to your team? Yeah, I mean, I guess we'll start with Todd Blackledge. You know, once we found out that we had the Big Ten, 
Uh, you know, we didn't really have a, a full college football package, if you will. We've been doing Notre Dame on its own for so many years. And, you know, you just start getting into a room and throwing out names. Who can we get? Who can we get? Like, who's, a, who's available? Who's the best person out there? And all those roads led to Todd. I mean, Todd, to me, is kind of the face of college football. Like, listen, there's a couple other guys out there, obviously, that are fantastic at their job. I've always gravitated towards Todd. Um, he, he just, everything is about the game. He's, he, he breaks it down in an easy way, but, but it's, he also points out things like nuance. Um, he's, he's really the total package. And then we got, to, I got to meet him and that just furthered our belief that, Hey, this is our guy. And, and thankfully, you know, I'm not part of the, the business end of it. So I don't really know behind the scenes how that stuff worked out, but thankfully for us, apparently Todd felt the same way. So he gave us instant credibility, if you will, like that, that to me is what Todd Blackledge did. And then uh, in terms of Mike Robb, that was a little bit different. I actually, we got to work with Mike Robb uh, a few years ago when we launched USFL. You know, obviously Mike has been doing some stuff for the NFL network and through a mutual connection, uh, a, a guy I worked with from Penn State, Ben Buma on hockey. You know, when we got the USFL, he was like, hey man, you know, maybe check with Mike Robb and see what he's up to. So kind of that's how that came about. And sure enough, he was interested in doing it and uh, and, the, and the relationship developed from there. Uh, but to your point too about, about leadership, preparation, Mike Robb is, is is cut from the same cloth. You know, this guy just shows up um, prepared completely uh, with an attitude that he wants to do work, and he's just an incredible teammate. You know, just as you would imagine a quarterback and captain would be. That that's what both of these guys personify in their daily lives. It's 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 really it's a pleasure to work with these guys. Matt uh, Tom Bradley here. Besides college football, you also do NHL and and NASCAR. Can you tell me a little bit about your first experience of a night game at Beaver Stadium? Yeah, it, uh, it it blew me away. I mean, I mean, listen, I, and again, I'm, I'm very biased because I, I grew up as a kid and college football was always my favorite. So the opportunity to do NHL uh, in NASCAR was incredible. And, and those environments are, are, are different in their own way and wonderful in their own way. Um, but I, I can tell you, I think I did 10 laps around the stadium on game day just to kind of, and I was imagining what it was going to look like. And then, you know, we kept watching tapes of, of the whiteout games uh, because we knew it would be somewhat similar, not exactly similar, but very similar in, in the way the team comes out. And I was I was almost breathless after the first two to three minutes of our show just because I was so amped up. And when you see the team burst through the door, they come out, the pom-poms are going. I, there's just nothing like it. And then, you know, when you find out at halftime that it's 110,747, I mean, I, that speaks for itself. There's really not much else you can say. It was unlike anything else I'd ever done. It was fantastic. Well, I'm impressed. Ten laps around that stadium, man. You really did soak up all the atmosphere. <laughs> I burned some calories, man. I was just so <laughs> amped up about it. And, uh, you know, checking out where our cameras were and envisioning, hey, this is what's going to happen when the team runs out. And just trying to just trying to get a feel for it. You know, just to, it was just it was you don't get those opportunities too often. And I just didn't want to miss out on anything. So uh, early in the morning, I. I went out there multiple times, took some laps, and uh, and really tried to breathe the whole thing in. Well, that's really cool to map it out. And guess what? In the future, you get to take some laps around the Rose Bowl and the L.A. Coliseum. Talk about that expansion out west. Yeah. I don't know if that complicates things or, I mean, it just increases the level of excitement. But you're going to have to expand the operation all, all the way out west for the Big Ten. No doubt. I mean, to me, and again, the behind-the-scenes stuff, and there are so many arguments, is this good or bad for college football? And I certainly understand all that. Um, but in terms of just NBC and Fox and CBS, all of us kind of doing the Big Ten, it, it certainly creates a bunch of very exciting possibilities, right? Like those are all storied programs. Um, some of those stadiums you just mentioned are, are, are places that every college football fan knows with their own traditions, certainly some logistics to work out and all that kind of stuff. But um, that's easy stuff to figure out once you see that you have the possibility of USC at Penn State or Penn State at USC uh, and all those different machinations of the matchups. It's just it's too exciting to uh to even conceive of not, not wanting to do it. It's, it's awesome. Great feedback on NBC's coverage plan for Penn State and the Big Ten. We're going to step aside for the TV show to take a break. We will continue our interview. So if you want to see the entire conversation with coordinating producer Matt Marvin, make sure to go to NittanyGameWeek.com for the entire interview, along with other web-exclusive content. It is almost time to hand out some scrap metal. This position needed someone to elevate, and this week's winner accomplishes the task. We're heading into the final minutes of Nittany Game Week. Scrap Metal is sponsored by the We Are In, voted number one game day restaurant in Center County. 
follow us on Facebook and visit thewearein.com or call for dinner or room reservations. Time to hand out a scrap medal, Tom. They needed the guy at wide receiver to say, I'm the guy, and Keandre Lambert-Smith certainly seems capable of filling that role. Finally, we get to the best part of this show here. Finally, <laughs> we get there. We're going to give the award this week to Keandre Lambert-Smith, known as KLS, four catches, 123 yards, and two touchdowns. Yeah, he really, really did a great job. And as I mentioned, he's up to the task. He wants to be the number one guy. Embracing my role as that number one guy, you know, I just feel better. It brings better energy, and I can just be more consistently a leader to the guys that's under me, the younger ones, uh, help Drew, talk to Theo, and just, you know, I'm leading more and just in a better spot mentally. The four consecutive big-time performances from Lambert Smith, including the Rose Bowl, where he caught the longest touchdown down in the game's history, 88 yards. In addition to a television show, we're bringing Nittany Lions together with our depth chart at NittanyGameWeek.com, connecting businesses that support the show with our viewers. Our goal is to build a team that keeps our hometowns strong. Follow along with our coverage of the 2023 Nittany Lions all season long on our website, NittanyGameWeek.com, or you can revisit segments and impact interviews from previous seasons. We have a lot to share with you when it comes to college football. Make sure to check out NittanyGameWeek.com for web-exclusive content. Jay, real quickly, it's going to look like a Michigan helmet. Why so? Because Fritz Chrysler invented that helmet at Princeton. He took it to Michigan. Dave Nelson, who played at Michigan for Fritz Chrysler, became the head coach of Delaware in 1951. Ever since they've had the same helmet. And there's your history lesson, right? We're teaching as we show <laughs> and review, right? All right, for Tom Bradley, Jay Paterno, I'm Todd Sadowski. Thanks for watching Nittany Game Week. We'll see you next time.